previously to enter this Techiesma studio, a person need to authenticate their finger on our own made fingerprint based door lock system. But times have changed. Now, in this COVID-19 scenario where people fear to touch such public devices like a fingerprint based door lock system where several other people have already touched their fingers on it, we, just like several other companies in my city, we shifted our fingerprint based door lock system to an RFID based door lock system along with attendance of course. So in this video, I will let you know how I made a safer alternative to fingerprint based door lock system for the interns coming to TechSM Studio. Let's get started. So now to make this project, you will require all these components whose links and lists are mentioned in the article whose link is mentioned in the description of this video. Along with this component, you will also require a 12 volt solenoid lock which I already attached onto the door. And after that, you will require a proximity sensor to open that door from inside the studio without touching it. So we try to make it as safe and as touchless as possible. So you need to connect all these components in this manner. Now as usual due to a lot of connection I just designed my own custom PCB for this project and gave its order straight away to GLC PCB. Now most of my viewer must already be knowing that GLC PCB is an online PCB ordering platform where we can get the PCBs delivered at our home with very simple steps. You just need to upload the Gerber file of the PCB project, select the color masking and pay for your order. So try ordering your own custom PCBs from GLC PCB to make your project looks neat and compact. So that's all about the hardware part of the project. Now let's jump onto the computer and see the coding part of the project. So here's the code which is used for our smart RFID based door lock system. So let's understand this code and let's see how the things are working. So first of all, the necessary libraries are declared and in case if you don't have any of the library, no worry, you just need to click the link mentioned in the code itself and using that link, you can able to download and install the library onto your Arduino ID. Moving ahead, uh, here are the keypad configurations, okay? So here I'm using a 4x4 hex keypad in my case and their respective numbers are mentioned here. Well, this mention or this kind of configuration is important because uh, here for taking the inputs uh, of the keypad, I'm using the library called keypad.h and for using this library you have to do all these steps okay after that i have defined the pin numbers on which i have attached the keypad so if you are following the same pin configuration which i have shown in the uh, video then you don't need to change any of this thing okay after that here comes the oled configuration the oled screen that we are using so particularly which uh, the screen which i am using is 128 by 64 pixels okay and uh, the pin numbers are also declared here so again if you are following the same pin configuration as i have shown no need to change any of this thing Moving ahead, here we have one more variable called secret code in which the value stored currently is 1234. Now this is the secret code using which a user can unlock the door uh, using the keypad in the pin code mode. Yes, in our project, we have two kinds of mode. One is the RFID mode in which the user can unlock the door using the RFID tag. And another is the pin code mode in which the user can unlock the door with the help of the hex keypad. And for that, we need to define a secret code. In my case, it is one, two, three, four. But in your case, you can definitely change this code according to your need. Okay. After that, some necessary variables are declared, which will be used in the code. No need to discuss this all things. Straight after that, here are the necessary parameters of IFTTT. Now, yes, in our project, we are going to use IFTTT for, you know, making the attendance on Google Sheet. So before discussing about the parameters, let's first configure and make our own applet on IFTTT. So for that, open up IFTTT on your smartphone. Well, if you don't have IFTTT already installed, I'll mention it's a, a download link in the description of this video. And well, yes, I know IFTTT is now become a paid version. It's no more free. So we can only create three applets for free and further we need to pay for the services. But when I researched about free alternative of IFTTT, well, I didn't find any, you know, like a uh, uh, similar platform like IFTTT. There were a couple of platforms, but uh, they don't have all the services that are provided by IFTTT. And well, they were not at all free as well. So I found IFTTT like uh, uh, ideal choice for this project. Okay. So first of all, uh, let's create our own uh, applet and for that click on this create button, click on add. Now here search for the service called webhooks. Now click on receive a web request. Now give an event name, I will name it as uh, RFID. Click on create trigger. That's it. 
So now we need to configure the that part of IFTTT. For that, click on add. So here I will search for Google Sheets. I'll click on add row to spreadsheet. Uh, you can just change the name of the spreadsheet if you want. I will change the name to RFID attendance. So now this sheet will be automatically created on your Google Drive. So you don't need to create any, okay? It will automatically create onto your drive. After that, uh, this will be the format row. Like first of all, it will be printing as occurred at the timestamp. After that, the event name, which is RFID, and then the value one, value two, value three that we will be sending through the code, okay? So this will be the format of uh, that Google uh, sheet and it will be stored inside the drive folder called ifttt slash maker webhooks slash event name, okay? So this will be automatically created. You don't need to change anything, just click on create action. Click on continue and click on finish. So this is how you can create your own applet in a couple of minutes on IFTTT and it is super duper useful. So yeah, I will still prefer IFTTT for sure. So after creating that, let's just come back to the code. So first of all, we need to write the event name. So the so event name in my case was RFID, so I will keep it as it is. And then you need to provide the key. Now key is a unique key which is provided by a webhook service and it is unique for unique account. And where you can find this key, for that you need to go to the uh, link called ifttt.com slash maker webhooks. This is the link. After that, click on documentation. And here is the key for your account. Simply copy this key and paste it here. That's it. Uh, straight after that, you need to provide your uh, Wi-Fi credentials because uh, uh, to make the attendance, this project do require the internet connectivity. So just provide the SID name and password of your router here. So now let's just jump on to the setup part of this code. So first of all, we are beginning the serial communication at 960 baud rate. And after that, here are some couple of pin modes. So we are declaring uh, like uh, all things as input output, pretty simple. And after that, we are beginning like the uh, RFID tag, the OLED screen and everything like we are beginning everything here. Okay. And straight after that, uh, here we are just printing as a scan tag and that's it about the setup. So after scan tag, we'll be jumping onto the loop part of the code. And let us observe the loop part of the code carefully. So first of all, the keypad.get key is a function of the library called keypad.h which, uh, which will be returning the particular key which was pressed on that, you know, hex keypad, okay? So, uh, well, what I will do, I'll skip this much uh, portion of the code because uh, uh, what I'll do, I won't be explaining the code, but rather I'll be explaining this all uh, thing at the time of, you know, seeing this project in action, okay? So it's basically like a, a functional code. So rather than I uh, explain the code, I'll show you uh, how, to sh uh, how to switch from one mode to another and how to enter the password and uh, stuff like that. I'll be explaining all the thing at the time of working of this project, okay? So the important thing which I need to discuss here is this RFID like number, okay? This is called as a UID of the card and the question is how you can get the UID of the uh, card that you are having. So for that, what you do is you need to go to the files, examples and open up the example called a dump info inside MFRC522, okay? Just uh, open up this example code now here in this example code, you need to change these two pin numbers, okay? So first of all, change the RST, that is reset pin to 36 and change the SS pin to five, okay? That's it. After that, you just need to upload this code onto the ESP32 board. After uploading the code to your ESP32 board, just make the connection of the ESP32 and the RFID module according to the diagram shown before, okay? So now if you scan that RFID tag on the RFID reader, a UID number of your card will be displayed onto the uh, serial monitor. You just need to copy that number and paste that number here in the main code. So this is how you can get this UID number for your RFID card. After that, here one more thing you need to do is you need to provide the name, okay? So, so what this name stands for. So the name is important to make the attendance of that particular card, okay? So for example, uh, the card with the UID this is assigned to my name. So as soon as I tap this card onto this RFID door lock, it will not only open up the uh, door, but it will also register an attendance onto the Google sheet with the name Sachin. Similarly, I have one more RFID card with the UID number this, and this number is assigned Signed to uh, one of the intern of Tech ASMS Studio called Hush. So whenever this card is read by this RFID door lock system, it will not only open up the door, but it will also, you know, make the attendance of Hush into that Google Sheet. So just uh, provide the UID number of the card, and after that, just provide the name that you want to make the attendance of. 
so yeah this is uh, a important thing which uh, you need to note here in the code the rest of everything will remain as it is and after that you just need to select the right board which is this do it esp32 dev kit v1 in my case select the right board and hit the upload button well i didn't explain the code in detail like i haven't covered all the line but uh, Trust me, this code has a lot of comments after every line, after every function. So it is very easy to understand this code. And still, I will just uh, guide you through how to use this project at the time of working of this project. So that's all about the coding part of the project as well. Now let's just connect the PCB with the door lock and the proximity sensor. And now let's just see this project in action. I have attached this hex keypad and OLED screen on the sheet with the help of hot glue gun. And on the back, I have attached this RFID reader in such a way that even if I scan the card from the front, the scanner will detect the card. After that, I will connect all these components on the PCB and I will attach this whole kit on the box which is attached outside the door of my studio. That's it. Now I will just attach the sheet with the box. So everything seems to be installed properly. Now before I show you the working of the project, do click that like button. Come on, do that and show me that you are loving this video and enjoying this project. Do click the like button right now. Okay, so now let's power up the project, close the door and let's see the working of the project. Well, the project didn't work at once and the problem was lack of power, okay? So what was happening as we are providing only single power supply to the whole project, at the time the door gets opens up, the solenoid lock sucks up a lot of power and due to that, uh, ESP board was not getting sufficient amount of power and in the end, it gets resets all the time when the door opens up. So what we did is, we just provided separate power supply to both solenoid lock as well as the ESP board and the schematic changes to this. So when we tried with this connection, well, the project worked. So now let's just see this working project in action. So yeah, the tag was recognized successfully and the door opens up instantly. And as the project was having the proper internet connectivity, it also made the attendance on Google Sheet. Perfect. So that was all about the RFID mode of the project. Now let me just show you how to switch from RFID mode to the pin code mode. To do that, you need to press the button A on the keypad. Now you are in the pin code mode. Now you just need to enter the secret code, which in my case is 1234. After pressing the number, just click on hash to enter. So as you can see, the door opens up. Now let me show you one more thing. Well, if you are in the keypad mode and want to switch from keypad mode to the RFID mode, how will you do that? Let me show you. For doing so, you need to press the button B on the keypad and you are back to RFID mode. So this is how you can open the door from the outside. Let's just see how to open the door from the inside. So now when you want to exit from TechSMS Studio, well, generally nobody wants to like get out from the studio. This is so amazing. But still, if you want to go out to the studio, what you need to do is you just need to hover your hand over the proximity sensor and the door open up for you. So this was all about my own made smart RFID based door lock system. Before ending the video, let me ask you, are you aware about that big virtual event on artificial intelligence which is happening soon? No? Let me tell you in very brief. So CBSE in collaboration with Intel is organizing an AI for youth virtual symposium in which we'll be having some talks on AI from industry experts, we'll be having some webinars on artificial intelligence, 5G, blockchain, etc. And not only that, we'll also be having some project showcase based on AI. So we are going to have a lot of things in that virtual event which will be starting from 13th of October. And don't forget to mark your participation and contribution towards the Guinness World Record for India. Yes, in this event, you can contribute to make a Guinness World Record for India. So watch out my previous video whose link is mentioned in the description as well as in the i button. Watch out that video in which I have talked in detail about that event and also about how you can participate and contribute in Guinness World Record. Okay. So do watch out that video and remember, you need to register yourself before 12th of October 6 p.m. for this particular event. Go ahead, register yourself to learn so many new and interesting things about artificial intelligence. I hope you enjoyed this video and got to know something new from it. If so, consider subscribing our channel as I used to upload many different kind of videos in this magical field of electronics. 
that being said ending this video here now just wait for my next video and explore learn share with me techie sms